All right, let, let's talk a little bit about your World Series champion, Texas Rangers. Uh, as you may know, MLB.com, MLB Network, they have been putting out, uh, slowly rolling out their top 100 players in baseball. And we got the last uh, the last returns on the top 10 last night. So we, ro we rolled all of this out. And ultimately, we find out that five Rangers make the top 100. And I, I, I found this uh, to be an interesting thing that happened because um, quite a few teams had five uh, on the top 100. In fact, the team that had the most on the top 100, can you can you take a guess of the 30 teams in baseball, which one has the most top 100 players? Okay, so obviously the Rangers up there. Uh, the Dodgers? Los Dodgers, seven. Yep. I was, yeah. If I remember, no, sorry, not the Dodgers. Because I, the Braves have nine. Yeah, nine top one hundred players, including the the number one player in the league, uh, Ronald Acuna Jr. He's really good. Yeah. Yes, very very good at baseball. My, Matt he, Olson he has comes in, almost no weakness. <laughs> Plays defense really well, runs the bases really well, hits really well. Yeah, uh, a little uncomfortable, especially because you know rivalry and everything. Astros supposedly have seven. Top 100 players. Obviously, they're aided by the addition of Josh Hader during this offseason. But there's one, two, three, four, five, uh, six, I believe, teams that have five on the top 100. And the okay. Rangers are one of those. The five being Corey Seager, who's ranked as high as sixth after Ooh. a fantastic season. Easily the best season of his career. Only playing 119 games due to injury. Uh, Marcus Simeon shows up at 21st. Mm -hmm. uh, Adoles, Adoles Garcia was 39th. Got him a nice little two-year deal this offseason. Nathan Avaldi, the first pitcher that shows up for you at 91. And then Nathaniel Lowe, your first baseman, 98. Uh, is there anything that jumps out to you when it comes to those rankings? Is there anything that you notice? So the first thing that I saw a good amount of people engaged in, and I kind of agreed, was Nathan Avaldi being at 91. Um, and I, I have to be completely frank. It is a little bit of recency bias coming in with me. I just be completely honest with you guys. How well he played in the postseason almost over vaults his kind of shaky and being hurt regular season. Where I'm like, man, this guy was like one of, if not the best postseason pitcher this year, was just money. And I'm like, I know he had a little bit of a shaky regular season, so I know that's what tacked him down. Um, but that, that's kind of my only thing. Maybe in the in the low 80s. High seventies range. I wouldn't have been. I wouldn't have been mad at either. Um, Seager being six. I'm seeing who was right above him at five. Freddie Freeman. Mm, Shohei makes sense. Judge Mookie Betts and Ronald. If, if, yeah, if, I'm not. I'm not mad. Yeah, yeah. He's he's it, in very good company he, there because it would. He he was in all the little MVP races. And Absolutely. All that. So Absolutely. I think six five. I'm good with either right around that range. So I I honestly Garcia. I think got a little bit, it was a little bit higher than I thought he was going to get. Really? I thought, I thought he got a little more respect than I thought he was going to get. What, what about you? Did you think he was going to be higher or lower right where he was at? <sighs> and I guess I need to I need to go back through this one more time. It feels like Adoles, the incredible arm out of right field in addition to now the offense. The tough part about it is the boom is really booming, but at times it can be a little boomer bust and we see the ways in which the, the plate discipline can sometimes come and go at times. Um, and here is where another thing, right? There's a couple of things. Uh, when we talk about maybe omissions, right? Um, I'm interested in maybe I need to, maybe they have already kind of laid this out. I did not listen to the entirety of the broadcast that MLB Network you didn't did. You to the five-hour broadcast of it? No, unfortunately, <laughs> I was on the air with you <laughs> yeah. yesterday. But I, I do wonder how they handled uh, injured players because Jacob DeGrom, when he is going and when he's healthy, which is a big caveat, but when he is healthy... I mean, he's got to be one of the 100 best players, but he is not healthy, and I imagine he's going to miss a large portion of the season, right? So maybe that's what ultimately keeps him on. I know Scherzer, you might question, you know, where he is as he continues to age as well. But, I mean, those guys, you imagine those guys should maybe be ones that are considered. And then the one that feels like disrespect on the truckwreck.com text line specifically, 325 mentions it, 214 mentions it, 940 mentions it. Jonah Heim your catcher. I mean, this dude has been fantastic 
uh, at the plate, but also behind the plate, yeah. uh, playing a ton, uh, having a ton of appearances behind the plate, and then just being a great, uh, a great game caller behind the plate, and then also, it, it's not, it's not the, he's not the easiest to run on, baby. Like it, it, he is a very, very good catcher, uh, and I'm still amazed because I did not fully see it coming, and he has continued to develop and get better, 100%. and it feels like disrespect to not give him. That nod, especially as he's one of the best catchers in the AL, like hundred percent, one of the best catchers in the AL. I think that's a great shot. I, I want to say it was either him or Josh Young, who I both think maybe got snubbed. One of them didn't make the top ten at their position, and everyone was freaking out. Even non-Rangers fans, I can't remember which one it was. One of them, when they put the top ten of the third baseman or catchers, didn't make it, and literally everyone around the MLB was like, "How did they not make it? He was um, made it to the All Star game, was in the World Series." hit really well, played defense really well. How was this guy not in there? And honestly, both of them probably got a little bit little bit of disrespect. Um, I thought Nathaniel Lowe got in because of his nice bat. I thought he was a great fielder watching him in all those games, but I think his bat carried a lot this year as well. Um, what do we think about this? This guy sitting in. What do you think about Jose LeClerc? Should have been considered from I, the 817. I think the tough thing about it is that I think that really gets into levels of recency bias, even though I think LeClerc was pretty damn good over the majority I mean, we, of the season. We didn't even have a, we didn't even know who it was throughout the season. We like, were switching we, closers. We there. saw, we saw the inconsistencies yeah. that showed up there. He put it together in a way and was nails when you needed him yeah. in the postseason for sure. But the, the inconsistency, I, I understand why you do not necessarily go to that place particularly with a reliever who did not like solidify himself for a long period of time over the course of the season yeah. as a closer unfortunately unless we're just talking postseason i don't think any rangers bullpen guys are going to make it from just a longevity of the season it wasn't exactly our strong suit they turned up when they need it most and that's all that matters for us but just as far as lists go and all that that's how they uh rank it from the 817 it was jonah heim they got snubbed from that original yeah. top 10 we should have known it was coming. Didn't yeah. Make the MLB top 10 of the position. But this is what lists are for, right? They get the people going. There's no way they do them like absolutely correct. And yet we are still going to be mad about them. Oh, but always. here we go, right? Like to this regard, at least, right? As it as it came together, right? Um, five, I mentioned, you know, all the teams that have five others. Here are the teams that you were alongside when it came to guys with um when it came to Guys, or sorry, teams with five players in the top 100. I mentioned the Rangers. The Orioles are up there when it comes to guys in the top 100. Five guys in the top 100. The Mariners, who uh, you know, who've added a couple in the off season. The Phillies are up there with five. Um, the Mets clearly have you know added a lot of uh, talent. The D backs who have like a lot of youth when it comes to that level of talent. So like that's a lot of teams that you are alongside when it comes to talent. Plus. You have some youthful guys that Evan Carter isn't up there yet, but you oh, imagine, you can see how that could, right. <laughs> Wyatt Langford isn't up there yet. You can see where that ends up. Like I, I really do appreciate, especially the offensive in particular yeah. talent of this Rangers team. Like those, this is the thing that makes me happy. That makes me really excited about this year. And to go back to the text line, where in the three one six throwing throwing darts. Heim statistically had one of the most called strikes on pitches out of the zone, which obviously speaks to nice his framing. pitch framing Woo-hoo! and those types of things, is man. That, isn't it, is there something that makes you feel better when you got a guy that's a little bit... Who, it's, and someone, who steals a strike? And right? steals a strike, like, like, yeah. yes, I will take it. Yeah. I will take it. Yeah. <laughs>